Hi guys, welcome to the Chit Chat on Elevata TV with Elevata One Sports. My name is Ida Fi Matthew Esogene. I have on the Chit Chat today uh, my friend, my sister, the most beautiful athletes out of this country and Africa. She's brilliant. Uh, they say beauty and brain don't go together, but somehow these two went together in one person. She's brilliant. And I was checking out our honors like a couple of days ago. And it was actually a political party manifesto. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be able to run through all of the honors because even my head could not carry it. But I dare say to you that if you find somebody else who's got all of these, then tell me that I'm wrong. On the national side, she's Nigerian Athletics Championship, 100 meters, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 13, 14, 16 champion. She's champion in 200 meters in 2013, 2014, 2016. Long jump, which is her favorite, which she loves, like Nigeria jollof rice, like coconut rice that she loves to cook. She's champion in 2007, 2008, 2009, 11, 12. 13 triple jump 2007 2008 ncaa women's division outdoor track and field championship she's 100 meters champion 2010 long jump champion 2010 ncaa women's long uh, uh 60 meters 2010 and then if you go to the circuit 100 meters i mean she's been dead done that you know she was at the london grand prix 2012 2013 Achilles 2012, IWF World Championship in Beijing 2013, Jamaica International Invitation 2014, Shanghai Golden Grand Prix 2015, meeting the Atletismo, that's what I read, in Madrid, if you remember, in 2016, and a whole lot more. She is the golden girl of Puma. She is also the golden girl of Nigerian Athletics. She's also a queen and a mentor to upcoming young athletes. I could, like I said, it's a political party manifesto, good political party anyway. And I could read a whole lot more and tell you, accolades is as long as Mississippi River. But then, let me not say all these things and you guys are viewing me and thinking, who's this person she's talking about? I'm talking about no other than Blessing Kagbari. I call her the sprint queen, my beautiful sister. She's elegant, she's adorable, she's beautiful. She's got a wonderful smile. My sis, my daughter actually described her as Ufoma Magdemo without the, the black mole. <laughs> uh, let me make welcome Blessing Akagwari. Blessing Akagwari, you're welcome to my chit chat. How are you? I'm good, thank you very much. Thank you for all that. <clears throat> let me not say anything, but thank you. I really appreciate that, thanks. I, I love your smile. I'm working on it today. It seemed to be in my little bit. Um, oh, kind of slept in, last in, night. Not in morning. traffic, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 work. Semester is running up, so I'm trying to make sure I get everything on point. So I have to stay up to complete a lot. I, I would bet, I can bet anything that you will get through schoolwork like cupcake, you know. I am, I will, but this is grad school and everything is very thorough. These professors don't play, trust me, they pick up any little, so I'm not trying to fall under any of those things, so I have to go over and over, back and forth with my professors, just to make sure that I'm trying to at least get the three A's for the first semester, this, this first semester out of it, and I'm actually on that page of getting it, so I don't want anything that I would take from it, so that is my goal, that's why I have to make sure I do all the work. Well, uh, if there was a bet, it was a chance to bet on anybody that would get all the A's with ease. I'll bet on you. I'm not saying get carried away, but I know that I'll bet all of my money, my savings, my company. I'll bet my company on you, knowing fully whether you're the kind of person that gets things done. Yeah, I have to. Keeps my sanity intact. It keeps me, I don't know, I... I have to get it done. If not, I panic, I worry, so less stress if I can get them done. So that's what I do across everything that I do in general. They're not just work, family, you know, I tend to just do it. Okay, let's jump into it. COVID-19 is the thing that has changed our lives. COVID-19 has re rebooted the world in slow motion. Probably 
it's good for the environment, but not good for humanity. But eventually, humanity will prevail. Uh, the all of the World Athletics Championship that were a bit were supposed to run this year, I'm not sure anyone is going to come up again. Uh, the Olympics in Tokyo is gone, just like it happened in the Second World War. It's gone again. There is nothing here. How has this COVID-19 whole mess affected blessing of Agbari? Well, uh, as a full-time professional athlete, it took, uh, it took and is still taking a huge toll on my career in general. Track and field is what I know more. I mean, I know other things, but that's what I basically actually focus on, especially because the way my season is run is you, you prepare, you get ready and you focus on it. So it's been the goal the whole year. And when the pandemic, this whole thing started, it was, at first it was like a shock that, okay, what is happening? Why does it have to be this year? You know? just because there was a lot going on, a lot of things I had to change, I had to do away. And I was just, you know, I have for the first time, I think I have me not having so much to put up with. It's, it's just the other things, but there's more blessing that she can focus on herself. She can take care of herself for, for the first time in so many years. And I was just looking forward to 2020. Not maybe it might not be perfect, but it's a good start from where I'm coming from. So when, when it started at first, he was like, okay, this can't be happening. And I know for like a whole complete one week, I kind of shut down. I just shut down. I wasn't talking. I wasn't even, I didn't talk to my coach, <laughs> you know, because the man was like, are you okay? Because he knows me. Are you okay? I was like, I don't know. I'm not. You know, and it was a day I know he called me and he said, when he found out they postponed the Olympics and he called me and he said, you don't cry. That's somebody that knows me. And I was like, uh, something like that. He said, you know what? I give you a pass to get a, a, a drink. If you can drink the whole bottle of the wine drink. So we kind of laughed about it. But the thing is, it took a toll on me because there was so much, when it comes to sport at the level, at a certain level, <laughs> there's a lot of investments that go in. So at first, all that investment, trust me, is like phew, out of the window. It's not like there's, uh, 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 there's somebody that's just like giving you the money to take and just do it, you know, but it, it takes physical strength, it takes mental strength, it takes your financial strength to actually prepare a top athlete to get ready for a big season. And all that takes a lot of it is like, as long as you're mentally focused, it takes a lot of financial focus. That means you're paying people. You're paying your team, your physical therapies, your massage therapies, your coach, you're paying your psychologists, you know, all of that put together. And then nobody refunding you money at all. So they're working, you're working. So all that went away. And the only thing that I was, I, I was able to pick for me was blessing this thing is bigger than you. Sure. You know, it is bigger than you and it is not about you at the moment. It is not about you. So I thought about it, I processed it and I was like, okay, let's pick up from where we left off. Let's just find a way around this. It might not be a perfect year that you want, how you probably want it, but somehow let's keep our life. Let's make sure we have life to actually fight for another year. Not, we don't want to be, we don't want to misuse whatever opportunity we have at the moment. So I have to make sure my priority at that point, if I can't compete, I can't do all of this. I have to stay safe. I have to stay healthy. So that was just, um, I, the, 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 it took a toll on me, but I had to, I came out of it. And I think the coming out of it was like, it just helped me build my mental state around the whole thing going on. And that's what has been actually holding me right now and working for me. Okay. Uh, you, you said like, preempted my, my head already when you talked about paying coaches, paying myself, paying physiotherapists and everybody. And the first thing that is dropping on my head is if I pay you for something and force my job happen and you don't deliver that service. And you're supposed to, even if you're not going to refund me 100%, you're supposed to refund me something like 50% or 60%. So my, my thought process here is blessing. I'm not sugarcoating you or I'm not saying me to make you like me but you are an A-list athlete. 
And you know how this thing we say in pidgin English, soup is sweet, now better money killer. True. So nobody wakes up. I can't wake up tomorrow and say, uh, tomorrow morning, I have faith. I read the Bible. She kaba. What's that one they say now? In Daboski, you are not. Hey, in bro, Daboski, I'm Don't walk like that from where I come from. What no. I do. It's never going to happen. So it means that this soup was sweet. Maybe a list at at least. It costs a whole lot of money to put it together. And I, every time you hear people, I mean, I've had people call me, oh, you are close to Blessing Akagbari, uh, help me talk to her so that my child can be like her. And, you know, I get that kind of messages and calls a lot. Oh, you're close to Alibaba, what can, what can we do so that I can have a child me mentored by... So I said, look, these things are expensive, they are not cheap. So for an at least, at least like Blessing Akagbari, what does it cost to put your entire year in program? Like, compress your entire year into... A number like 100 naira, 1 million naira, 1 billion naira. What does it cost? Or a dollar, sorry, you spend dollars. Oh, yeah, I do spend dollars and euros sometimes when necessary. <laughs> but um, so most of I can't give you an accurate figure, but it depends on how you're preparing that year. So, so let's look at the past, like the last couple of years I've been dealing with injuries. Yeah. And most of the time I do most of my treatment, I go to Sweden. Uh, Germany and London. Okay, so when I'm in London, I stay in Brunel University. You know, there's a, a little hotel there, and I stay. So I stay there because there's track, there's you know everything that I need, the gym, everything is right there. And I have a therapist that come give me treatment every day. There, that's separate. So that one charges me a hundred and fifty, I think a hundred pounds per hour. That's 100 pounds per hour. This is not in America at the moment, too. Huh. That's 100 pounds per hour. And so most of the time, if we don't do treatment, maybe two and a half hour, two hour plus, like that minimum of two hour. That's like every day, or at least three or four times a week, give or take, that's there. And when I go to um, Germany, I, I stay, I get, I get to see Dr. Mueller with her, he's, he's there, he's a, he's, a big, he's a great doctor. And I do a certain kind of treatment. So one, one, when we go there, we do like an MRI to check what's going on, especially because I was having like the bulging, the disc on my back, bulging disc on my back. So it was affecting my sciatic nerve. So it's a certain kind of injury that most times <laughs> it's not an injury that can be fixed like this. So that's why when I go to London, I have a therapist that works on me every day. Certain things have to be put in place. If not, my training will be like, Pfft. when I go to compete, it doesn't work. But when I sit on the plane for so long and I get off the plane, I need a certain kind of adjustment to get me off. If not, that competition is going to be hell. It's just how it works. So it's not a kind of injury that you just put injection on the heels. No. So I go to Dr. Miller Wilfer to like give or take to do certain kind of uh, treatment and when I do the treatment for like three four days if I'm not spending money maybe almost um three to four thousand euros living there yeah and excluding um hotel accommodation and that's it then there's a guy that does my needling treatment so I'm very muscular if you've been around very very muscular hold and on, setting hold on, hold on. talk about needle treatment See that one that you sent me a picture of about 7,000 needles on your body? But he ain't 7,000 needles. It wasn't up to 7,000. Stop over. <laughs> my, my, my eyes are deceiving me because I was scared. Like, look like something from a horror movie. Like, there were like 7,000 needles. I thought you were a mutant. No, but it's, and they hurt. It's no I joke. Know. Every time I finish, I get a uh, fever coming out of that. So it's crazy. But that's because my, I'm very muscular. And there's certain kind of treatment that don't work for me. So they have to go through, they call me, my other guy, we call me muscles on muscles. So they have to go through a certain muscle to get to where they want to go. So that needle treatment is one of the treatments that actually works so well for me. So there's a guy in Sweden that really does it well. I find, thank goodness, I have a guy here close to me in Lubbock that does it too. For me. So he goes through, I go to Sweden. He's in uh, Uppsala. I go there to see him and does that kind of treatment. So these are three different people. So for like years, I was battling with certain injuries. I, honestly, I don't even know how much a year that would that cost me. So, but let's look at a normal, healthy, 
professional blast in a year. So three times, at least three times a week, I get treatment, massage and all that deep, deep tissue therapy. And the guy here charges me a hundred uh, hundred dollar per hour. So most time I would do an hour or an hour thirty minutes. You would take so that's like you know one hundred and fifty. I must spend it that day. So, but at least I try to get three times a week treatment. So, but because of the budget days that I have, which is not uh, an injury that just go away on its own, I get to get adjustment twice from a chiropractor, different from whoever I get treatment from every day. You understand? So three times a week, a day, at least I spend 150 with this guy, three times a week, so at least that's $450 with him. The other guy, the guy that does my chiropractor. Hold on, I have to multiply that by 52 weeks of the year. Doesn't have, we don't probably, we don't do like a whole year. So that's 450 per week, you understand? And so I go to see my chiropractor. So I get to see my chiropractor at least twice a week. So I get, I do, I see the chiropractor and I get on a traction machine. There's a traction machine. That traction machine actually adjusts my back, stretch, release it, make sure. Because the disc is kind of out. I know when I got my bulging disc, it was like eight millimeters out, which is like kind of a lot. So they have to make sure they're doing those kind of adjustments to make sure that these kind of try to come back in a little because it's slipping out. That's what it does. So the guy will charge you, even if you stay there for 10 minutes, Malabo has collected $100. There's no negotiation. They're not the, mm -mm. So at least I see him twice a week. I get on the traction machine and I get adjustment with him. That's chiropractor. That's what they do. Even if they put you for 30 seconds to adjust you, they have collected their money. That's just how it works with them. So that's say with them, $100. So a week with just these two people, I will spend, that's 450 plus 100. That's $550 a week. Okay, so now, sorry to say the but so you go through all of these. That's so, the people I see here. Yeah. No, but you, I travel out of town. I yeah. do travel out of town with a certain treatment I needed. There's a guy in LA that does, he travels with me when I go to competition and the other guy in London. So those, they charge you different. So it depends on who you're seeing. The prices go, it varies. That's how it works. So we're not counting food. No. We're not counting the coaching fee. The coaching fee that you, <laughs> that you pay. Those people, they don't return money back to you. So it, it takes, it does take a lot to build the, yeah. So, you know, because I'm trying to compare this and contrast with like football where everything is done for you. You don't even be the federation. So like that. And with these people, when I choose to travel with a massage therapy and a physiotherapist, I pay for their flight ticket, I pay for their hotel accommodation, and I still pay them. So I'm just giving you me being a lover for a week. If I get minimal treatment, this is at least on just those two people. I'm spending any on what I'm doing. If I'm going longer, it takes long, more money, shorter time, you know. So 550 on just two people, just doing basic treatment. If I want a different center, I go out of town. I have to go out of town, which costs you travel, all of that stuff. And most of the people you travel with, they tell you we're leaving our office. So you have to pay us a certain amount of money because that's how it works. Yeah. Okay, so so sometimes without this knowledge, you go into a, a competition and you you're running through the pain barrier. Is that not what it's called? You're running through the pain barrier and Blessing comes third or fourth or second, and you wake up the next morning back home. Here, there's an headline that says, Ah, she's past her prime, she's not running well. I mean, how does that make you feel? At a point, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend. At a point, it was getting to me, but I, I've been through a lot the last couple of years, and I just had to focus on things that I had to take care of. Because there are, I just find that there are people that, I don't know if they're bored or lack of clarity, or they just feel like trash talking people. They sit down and write. So like I said, at the point it gets to me and I, I just, I'm very upset and I want to respond. But for now, you can talk about the trash you want. It's none of my business anymore, please. 
because I know what I go through, I know what it takes. Apparently the people, I, so one of the things I have to take from it is the people, of people that I have seen that just come out with certain end life. I don't see your kids doing sport. I don't see your kids doing what I do for a living. So please, apparently if it's that good, if you think it's that good or easy, your child will probably be doing it. And two, maybe they don't have the talent. So it's cool you're doing your job while you're doing your job. But I just feel like there's certain things that sometimes when they go out there, it's just, it's way past, like it's just way out of line. And I can't teach you how to do your job, but while you're doing it, you have to put a lot of things into consideration. It's, it's not like you always um, writing the positive things about people. I mean, we love positive energy. It does help us a lot. And uh, yeah, there are times you go out there and say report like we didn't do well as expected, but when there are certain headlines that you just put and it's like, really? Oh, okay. You know, so we, sometimes we just look at that and the story might be great, but when you come up with a certain kind of headline, it's like, what is your point? You know, what is your point? So I, I mean, it takes, it takes a lot to build and sustain champ champions and a lot of appreciation go into it. And, but if people are not appreciating you as much as they do, I think most of the time you just have to know that you come first. Because if you're not at your best, you cannot even give, you can't give them what they're looking for, what they want. That's just how it works. Absolutely. Yeah, so you take, now I focus on taking care of me and the people I mentor and I try to, I try to make sure I tell them that I understand this is it. You can be as lawyer, or respectful as much as you can to people and they still would not appreciate you. So what's the point? Okay, I'm sorry, I'm cursing. That's just it. So the thing is you come first. You come first, take care of you, be at your best, you're healthy. So when you are at your best and you're healthy enough, you can actually do the things that you have to do and do them right. So it's fine, there are mistakes. You don't always get the results you want. It is easier for you to actually correct this mistake, but when you're not at your best, you're hurting, you're doing this, and you still go out there and perform, it's just so hard to actually say, did I, did I do this bad because I was hurting? I was dealing with this injury. I didn't just execute. This thing is getting to me mentally. There's, then there's a lot of factors that you want to be looking into. And it's draining. It drains you. That is the truth. Okay. Uh, you just mentioned the people you mentor. And I know that as a broomer, divine Oduduru, these are your kids. And most times, most times when we say these are your kids, I'd be like, this bless yourself. I would see that we're saying these are our kids. But then that's the problem with starting early anything you do in life. I get that feeling too. But like, hey, the other day somebody said I'm the Alibaba of media, like free media. And I'm like, I'm just, uh, I'm just starting. So let's come to your children. You know, I always see you cooking, I was in the kitchen. And there's something that's always in my head. And I'll be like, can I do, I mean, my media is growing. I would love to do a cooking with Blessing of Kagwari, like in the kitchen. You're always cooking, and then you have this pepper them gang attitude of telling me what you're cooking, knowing that I would not eat it. It's, it's not, no, it's wickedness, actually. I'm telling you. But is there ever going to come a time where you do a reality show that is centered around cooking? Yes, yes. Um, I will, I probably will. The thing is, there's a lot that come around. For me, there's a lot that comes with cooking. It's an hobby for me when I do it. Because you but love cooking, bless you. You cook. I do. You can I cook do. for Africa. I tell you, sometimes I go stand for kitchen. I know they believe in a stand from morning to evening. That's the hour and track. Me just standing and training and doing all that. That's another place I, I am and I just be myself. And I will forget that I'm standing that long just doing something. You know? But um, I know my son will tell me, sometimes when I ask the wine, I say, every time you come and carry food, carry food, you cannot even say, me, you will cook something, God give me. And I said, man, I can't cook your kind of food. I don't understand how you do it. So I told him and I said, well, first of all, you have to have patience. I don't know if everybody knows, a lot of people know this. There's something that comes with patience when you cook. Yeah. There's food you cannot cook in a hurry. It's like frying plantain. You put that plantain in the fire, you just turn off the heat so high, that thing will just burn and will not cook. I know from cooking anything fried, when they're not well cooked, 
it's hard for you to digest it when you cook it, when you eat it. It's very hard to digest food that are fried and they are not well cooked. It's hard for you to digest it. So if I want to fry plantain, I take my time. I put the heat to a certain level and I make sure I'm there because I don't want it burnt. I want it to cook to a certain way, in a certain way. So it takes patience for me. In general, you have to, there are certain food you apply, you take, take more time to cook than the other. So that's the same thing when I cook in the kitchen, there are different foods. So that's the same thing with life. There are different stages in life. That there are some you pay more attention to than the other. There are some that actually taste better than the other. And there are some situations that you come up better than others. Life in general. So I cook for, as an hobby. It's an hobby for me. Show-wise, I'm working on it. I might do it. You know, just because it's not about just cooking the food. It's just a lot of things that go into cooking that I apply to my life while I'm actually in the kitchen doing it. Guys, did you see the whole beauty that came with a description <laughs> of food, the way she was kind of caressing the whole idea of frying plants? I was the caressing! Caressing <laughs> it and making it look like, God bless it! I'm hungry now, I need food! I need food! And you know, the amazing thing about you and cooking and all that is, first people are not supposed to be foodie. But then it doesn't affect you. How do you manage to stay disciplined? Because if I stay in the kitchen for that, I like to cook. But I tell my wife that if I stay too long in the kitchen, I might well blow up and there's going to be a problem. How do you manage to stay this disciplined and still cook that much for all the people that you cook for? It's, the thing is, I, I, because I, I'm not cooking it because I want to eat, 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 eat this. I cook it for fun. So there was a thing of mine told me, where are we going to make goat meat pepper soup? I said, boy, I'm on a fish diet this week. But that doesn't mean I did not cook goat meat pepper soup that week. That is my point. It takes a lot of discipline. Trust me, it's a lot of discipline uh, to stay in the kitchen that long. There are some food I cook. I don't really test it. I just like, okay, this is it, this is it. And it comes out right. That's because I bake. Like sometimes I will sit down and bake like maybe 100 pieces of meat pie. I might even eat just two out of it for the whole week, but I'll just share it for the kids in college and school like that. You know, it takes a lot of discipline. So for me, it's not about I want to eat this. It is I cook this for fun because there are a lot of people I get to give this food to. I get feedback. Oh, it was nice. It was better than the last one. And stuff like that. So I enjoy it. But for what I do, my, I, I'm very disciplined at, at what I do. I know what I have to eat and don't eat at, at the large quantity more and stuff like that. So the discipline comes regardless of what you're doing, even if you spend all the day and all the night in the kitchen, it doesn't mean you have to eat the whole thing that you cook. Even the people that I give the food to, I do it too. It's not like I'm over giving them to be shrugging this thing in or up and down. The ones that actually do track, I know they, are, they have to have portion control. You eat it, but you have to have portion control. I'm not giving you this food to eat it once. So spit it, you know, eat little by little, not eating everything at the same time. It's discipline. I have to discipline myself, but I, I cook for fun and I enjoy it in general. All right. Uh, you're one athlete. Uh, beside what you do, I mean, the, all of the drama of being an athlete, your wig falling off, all of those things, there's a part of you that really intrigues and amazes me. It's the fact that you are 100% excellent on the track and field as well as in the classroom. As a matter of fact, your school inducted you, you're the first African, I think, to be inducted into that category of all of famous. And you didn't see it coming, but it came. And then, I mean, at that stage, you're like, okay, you've done your best, but then you're still going to grad school now to do that. How does Blessing or Kagbari manage to perfectly balance the scale? of training because even in this COVID-19, I've seen videos of you training in an empty stadium. How do you manage balancing training? We're doing this interview now and you're still writing some papers, writing tests. I, I see that. How do you manage to balance the two and still live your life, take care of your children, cook for them? I keep saying your children. I'm somebody who's going to watch this video and I say, ah, bless it up, boy. I'm talking of divine Oduduru and co, eaters of life. Oh, they are very selfish, though. Those divine, divine, no best, no best. But we'll talk, we'll talk sometime. How do you manage to balance all of this? Well, my priorities are always, uh, I put my priorities first. I, 
And say I go to a grocery store, I make a list of what I want. I make a list of the things that I prioritize. And um, I want to be better. I want to learn. I want to be able to apply this knowledge. You know, so if I choose to go to, I'm going to grad school, it's not because I want to just they put it on my resume. Like I went to this college, I got, uh, 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 I got my master's in this. I want to be able to apply it. And when I call up to actually do certain things, even if I become a governor today and somebody write me, a speech, I should be able to read it and know where to put all that. I'm like, this ain't right, go fix it. You know, knowledge is power. And I want to be able to apply it where I should be applying it, not places that they are not even like, it, when you do it, it's like, what are you doing? You get my point. But my priorities are very, I, I prioritize a lot of things in my life. That's because I have to be okay. I have to be at my best to actually help people to do the things that I have to do. So my career is on top of it. The people are, that I love, I, I make time for them. I care about them. And I prioritize a lot of certain things in my life that it's not about now, it's about the future for me. So priorities, I really set my priorities straight, straight and I stick, I stick to them. Yes, as much as I can, I stick to them because I just want to be better. Most of the time I tell people I am all I have. And if I am not okay, if I, if I don't, if I don't actually take care of me right now, I will fall apart. That means the people that are looking up to people around me will fall apart. So I'm trying to be the best that I can and stay strong while I'm actually helping others. Yes. All right. I, I would really have loved to go further than, but I mean, I know you're short for time. You have assignment to take care of. But before I let you go, can you take us through the journey of your best five moments since you got into this journey of becoming an athlete and the whole athletics journey the best five moments and your five moments that you don't want to remember uh that moments i don't want to remember the moments i don't want to remember is where i don't actually get the things that i want um i don't get the things that i want every moment for me as an athlete as they are always memorable um but the greatest ones are just when I get on that podium. Um, I mean, the Olympics, the World Championship, the Commonwealth Games, they all mean a lot to me. But the thing is, every time, I'm, I really don't have like best moment, worst moment. When I, worst moment is when I don't achieve the things that I set out to, I work so hard and it doesn't come, it takes a huge toll on me. But the thing is, I am grateful and I'm appreciative. I am thankful for people and God and everything. Every time I get on that podium, it means a lot to me. Because for an athlete, when you can get on the podium, trust me, you do not remember the sweat. There are certain things you don't even remember that moment anymore. You're so happy, you're grateful. Even if you wanted to win a gold and you want a bronze medal, trust me, the excitement is crazy. You can't even explain how you feel at that moment. But when you don't get any of it, you tend to think about the sweat, the sun, the money you invested. Everything comes down like what just happened. So every moment that I have been out there are always memorable and great to me, but the greatest ones are when I get on the podium. God, I am thankful for moments like that. I am grateful and I'm appreciative of the people God placed in my life. You know, the moments where they just let me know that you got this. And it's like, it's not like blessing you did this. It's like, yes, we did it. We did it. Those are like, those are priceless moments for me. They are always priceless moments for me. Thank you very much for sharing your precious moment with us. Thank you for sharing your time and your beautiful smile and gap too that you refuse to give my children. <laughs> really selfish gap too. God is watching you on NTA. And thank you, for, thank you for making food look like something walking on the wrong way in Paris or New York or London or Milan. Just to fry plantain is all that thing you did. Well, let me go and fry plantain and see if I can do it that way. For the fry it. You would, the thing is, it's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's just fine. You go and fry it. Just put the plantain and just turn up the heat. It will burn before the other side goes. It's like, Blessing. I'm the same. That's how I see it. Blessing. The, the one thing we both have in common is that we come from Niger Delta. We both have parents that can slap like Serena Williams said me. <laughs> And the first bond. So I know what it means to burn food or burn plantain. For what? That's money that they also had. You go and burn plantain. You want that? So I understand. But it's just the way you, the description that you put to it. 
the narrative. I'm not saying people don't bump Lantino. We have a tendency of doing that. I'm just saying. So, so that people that will fry that plantain and it just now you don't it already you just change color and it's, it's you don't don't. You understand? But you can actually find if I if I if I get plantain, I've eaten plantain outside, and if I open that, if I just try to cut it, I know this thing is not cooked. It's raw inside, but it's brown outside. You get my point. They are fried food that you when you know they are cooked, they are cooked. So I'm just saying it's up to you how you want it. I'm going to enroll you in Master Chef anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. When this whole COVID issue is over, we are coming to Texas. We're coming. We want to come and no eat coconut right. <laughs> and scientifically fried plantain. <laughs> Do have yourself a lovely day. Thank I wish you the very best. There's no science behind it. It's just what it is. That thing you said is science. So. It's science. Yes, it's actually and science. It is science when you know what temperature to put it on. It is science when you know what time to leave it, knowing that you don't have to work. It's cause and effect now. It's a lot of motion, cause and effect. So thank you so much. <laughs> no problem. Thank you for having me. Right. Have a wonderful time yourself. Bye. Bye.